Okay, everyone. Welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Appreciate it. Looking at the attendee list, I see there's a lot of uh, people that we've interacted with before. So welcome back, everybody. And those of you who are new, uh, thank you very much for joining today. Hope you get enough out of this presentation that you were looking to get out of. So this presentation is all about Office 365. What can it do for you? Like the slide here says. Uh, a big piece of Office 365 is SharePoint Online. And uh, that's going to be our main focus today because, of course, we are a SharePoint site, a SharePoint company. So that's uh, going to be our focus. But we're going to touch upon other topics as well. So link the messaging system, exchange. Uh, you have, of course, the Office Professional Plus suite that you get with some of the versions of Office 365. What is it? that it all provides, what kind of different versions there are of Office 365, and exactly why should you care? What can it do for you? And you can be a small business, you can be a, a medium size or a large business, or you can be an individual who owns a business of some sort like that, or you are part of something, or your manager maybe, let's say, have said, you know what, go find out more about this Office 365 phenomenon. What is it? How can it help us? We're hoping to answer all these questions and more by discussing these things, by showing you uh, the screens from the actual deployment. Uh, it's going to be very much information-packed seminar or webinar. Uh, there is no, of course, sales that we're doing over here. It's uh, uh, SharePoint videos, us, we're not really directly affiliated with Microsoft. Uh, but at the same time, of course, we do a lot of business with Microsoft. We have today with us Mark Cashman. Mark Crash, Cashman is the product manager for SharePoint Online. Okay, he's in the SharePoint team. But uh, being the product manager of SharePoint Online, of course, he is very, very integrated into the Office 365 uh, you know, messaging, basically, putting it out there. And Mark has been involved with it uh, for a very long time. So um, I'll have Mark introduce himself in just a couple of minutes. Uh, before that, I'm going to take two minutes of your time maybe three minutes, and just talk about uh, SharePoint videos. SharePointvideos.com is the one that's sponsoring this webinar. So let's talk about that, and then we'll jump into the actual webinar. Here are some of the uh, SharePoint facts that I'm sure you know about. It's a pretty big business, and SharePoint has really caught on, you know, on fire within the industry within the last few years. Uh, by the way, I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Asif Rahmani. And I'm the host for today. Uh, I've been doing training, consulting, writing, speaking on SharePoint since 2005. Uh, and I've seen this product grow quite a bit in those days, from those days. At that time, nobody really knew what SharePoint was aside from a few folks around us. And now, of course, it's a very mainstream product. So there's a lot going on, and a lot of other products are also being tied in to uh, SharePoint. This is something I still see happening, unfortunately, that uh, SharePoint is a great, great product, but one of the main reasons that uh, some of the SharePoint projects fail is because of lack of user adoption. People who don't know exactly what to do with this product. This is something that should make your life easier, not make it harder. And that is a message that I personally, and I know Mark also, and everybody else in the SharePoint community tries to convey to our customers and clients and attendees at conferences all that you know what you use this for what you need it for it could be document management it could be search functionality it could be business intelligence it could be a variety of things you use it to your advantage but users need to be trained on how to use the product and also how to build solutions on top of the product using either the browser or no code applications like SharePoint Designer InfoPath Visio Access or other things. Of course, you could do coding as, as well in there, but our focus on SharePointVideos.com is to do no-code applications, no-code scenarios. So we provide on-demand training to your SharePoint users with SharePointVideos.com. Here's the site, SharePoint-Videos.com. You can go to SharePointVideos.com. It will take you there as well. And like I said, creating powerful solutions, no-code. That's our motto. Okay. Um, here are some facts about our SharePoint videos, fully narrated by SharePoint experts, 
video length, four minutes to uh, 30 minutes each video, full of demonstration. That's what we see that people want. They want to be shown how to do certain things and not just uh, do the death by PowerPoint. That's something <coughs> that nobody likes. So we focus on that quite a bit. Lots and lots of videos. We have 247 videos out there right now. Uh, a few more are going in this week and more are going in the week after. So end user functionality, SharePoint designer, business connectivity services, reporting services, workflows, InfoPath, and a whole lot more is already there. Coming soon, uh, next week, we are going to be rolling out access and access services. And uh, a couple of weeks after that, most probably, we're going to be deploying the SharePoint branding DVD out as well. So videos out there. So here's a, just a sample of the videos that we have out there. Installation of SharePoint, navigation, customization, using the chart web part for business intelligence, exporting your lists, exporting your sites. Uh, how do you do that? Lots of server administration stuff, lots of site collection or, and site administration stuff. And like, like I mentioned, BCS, so external content types, workflows, SharePoint data views. There's a whole lot of stuff out there. And there's a lot of free videos I would suggest go ahead and watch the uh, I believe about three dozen free videos out there check them out and if you feel you want to learn more then you can join us within the site here's this is the last slide that I have here uh, we have single user licensing and we also have corporate licensing I don't have a mark over here but uh, this right here this is uh, talks about a corporate licensing where your people can come to our site and uh, watch the videos if you prefer so if you want to talk about corporate licensing contact us by clicking on the contact us on the site and we can talk more about it on the phone or on email whatever you like and we have a uh, DVD ROMs for each of the functionality so check that out and we have single use licensing for subscription uh, $9.95 per month or $199.50 for the year alright that's it hopefully this information is helpful to you for yourself or for some, uh, other users and they can come to the website and at least watch the free videos and this, they might be helpful to you so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Mark. Mark, if you would like to go ahead and start with introduction, and then we'll go from there. You bet. Uh, thank you, Asif, and thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, it's a nice, cloudy day here in the Northwest, and hopefully everybody's having a nice summer. And certainly appreciate you taking out uh, uh, 75 minutes of your day to learn a little bit about Office 365 and, of course, uh, a little bit more depth on SharePoint Online. Uh, since I can go a little bit deeper there. Um, I just put in a couple of links, the four that you'll see here. Um, like Asif said, we're going to stay away from PowerPoint. Not that I don't love PowerPoint, uh, but I think on uh, sessions like this, it's just a lot more value to just see the stuff. So we're going to see a lot of demo. We're going to take a lot of Q&A during and after. Um, and you feel free to ask any questions about uh, Office 365, ask questions about SharePoint Online or the other services. Um, and I'll try as best I can is to answer them. If we don't answer them today, make sure that we follow up and, and put them alongside uh, where the on-demand recording gets placed. But I'm going to start off by just uh, covering a little bit broader Office 365, um, starting with resources. So instead of my resources slide, which I would show at the end, I'm going to start at the beginning and uh, just direct you to where we've got a lot of information, a lot of new information especially since we just launched about six or seven days ago. So the best thing about this session uh, is we finally get to say that Office 365 is in market and uh, it's doing really well in its first week. So uh, we've got a lot of new resources, a lot of new information, customer videos, lots of uh, Word uh, and uh, sorry, um, marketing documents obviously to read through. We think they're very valuable. They're not just marketing documents. They're very accurate, truthful, and, and insightful um, so that you understand what the service offers, how you get it, um, and what it can do for you. So the first one, and uh, I'm just going to minimize this, and hopefully you're able to see my screen. And uh, see if I'll just pause just for a second. Are you able to see my screen? Yes, I can see just fine. Great. Um, so what we're seeing here is uh, Office 365, uh, our main website. And the URL that I provided is a generic URL, so no matter what country you're in, it'll redirect you to the, the Office 365 site in your language. Um, it resolves finally here uh, for me to the US version since I'm in the United States. Um, but if you follow any of these links, they'll direct you to the sites that are in your language because they're more redirect or generic uh, and will resolve properly. Um, but if you haven't visited the Office 365 uh, yet or lately, um, there's a lot of things here. And the first thing I want to start off with is 
it, you could even do this during the, the broadcast, is go and start the trial so that you can try out Office 365 by yourself. Um, it'll take you probably about 10 or 15 minutes to walk through the sign-up process. Um, there is no obligation. You can try it for 30 days. And you're trying everything. You're trying SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, Link Online. You can even try a digital download version of Office 2010 Pro Plus. So you can try out everything at no cost within very little time to get yourself up and running. And then whatever it is you want to focus on first, we've got a lot of getting started guides to help or if you already know a technology, just to play with it and see what it's like running from our service. Um, so the first thing is, I would say, get the trial. Um, and really, it, it, it should be very easy to get. And once you get it, you can also then invite people from your organization in. They don't have to get their own trial, um, but you can actually start to invite people and add users to your account so you can start to collaborate, start to see shared calendars and do instant messaging chats and video chats and, and uh, voice calls PC to PC. Um, so there's a lot of things that you can do during the trial. Um, but anyway, this is the new Office 365 site. Um, there's a lot of information here in terms of what it is. There's also a drill down when you get to the individual services. If you want to go a little bit deeper into Link Online, SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, um, even a specific section for Office Web Apps if you haven't used the Office Web Apps yet. Um, they run really well in the service and they're really helpful. Um, but each one of these pages, and I'll just click on the, the one that is a little bit closer to my heart, is the SharePoint Online one. It's not an overwhelming uh, amount of information at this level. It's really just to get across the what it is. But we also have ties into where we're doing a lot of daily uh, uh, you know, promotions or daily information through social outlets, um, videos that we're producing, and certainly news and stories that are being published by third parties, not just Microsoft. So it's really a site that aggregates a lot of that together. Um, if you leave today and are wondering you know, what are the different packages and services, um, there's a section for that now that I think is very, very clear, better than how we had it in beta. Uh, but it gives you an overview of some of what you'll see when we get to the demo as far as what is the professional and small business offering, what is the mid-side business and enterprise offering, and then certainly to talk a little bit about what we have coming for Office 365 for education. Um, and then finally, there's a nice uh, area of support uh, that's a little bit unique for Microsoft. Microsoft now having Office 365 as a service um, not as a product, is treated a little bit differently in that we have a little bit more of a real-time feedback channel, uh, which is here called Community. And I'm just going to show you the Community site real quick. But this is where you can come and we'll be posting, this is effectively the Office 365 team blog, where we post a lot of information, some of it very minute in terms of how to do something. Um, we see if we get a lot of people that are getting blocked or having trouble with certain features or functions. Um, obviously, if it's something we need to fix, we'll take action on it. If it's just a question and we have an answer for it, we'll provide it here. But it's very real time and it's very much driven by both Microsoft and the community. So we have just an equal amount of partners that are weighing in and, and making sure that these questions get answered. Uh, but it has a, a blog section, a forum section, and a wiki section. Uh, and this is growing daily and has, has gotten really good feedback so far as, as far as reaction time and, and the amount and the types of content you'll see here. So I, I encourage you to go to that site. There's a lot of information. and. This is sort of my cheater way of, instead of showing slides about Office 365, uh, you know, we get to see the website. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, another big deliverable that we have, and the one that I own, is the SharePoint Online service description. But now we have all of the general availability, the in-market pro in, in product service descriptions for all of Office 365 services. So if you go to this URL, it's the second one that I called out here. Again, this being a generic redirect that will take you to your localized site. Um, this will take you to these uh, documents that are about 20 or 30 pages long. And what they have in them is the factual source of truth of what these services are. Uh, if you're familiar with these technologies in terms of the base products that they are based off of, uh, then you would understand the, the deltas. If you're new to some of these technologies, you would just get the insight of, of certainly what are the capabilities and features. Um, but it also rolls up a little bit of licensing information per service. And it gets into some of the limits that aren't necessarily features. But as an example for SharePoint, there are a, a, a storage equation. So you get X amount of storage per tenant. Um, each individual user adds, adds an additional amount of storage to the overall pool. And that's called out in the service description. And, and it's uh, pretty well articulated, I think, so that you get an idea of how much storage uh, you have available in the cloud. 
Beyond that, it goes into, of course, all of the workloads and features and functionality of all the different services. Uh, we've gotten really good feedback, and these have been refined through the beta based on feedback of people consuming the beta version. Um, so these are pretty very up-to-date within the last six days. Uh, and uh, I think make a good read if you really want to uh, weigh in on what is this service, what does it do for me, and, and uh, maybe what it isn't if you're trying to answer some of those questions uh, in your decisions of trying to buy or what, what, what features and functionality do you need so you know what SKUs are appropriate for your end users. Um, so that's the last pitch here for the service descriptions. Um, uh, they're a good read, and if you see anything that you like or don't like about them, that's, that's again, a good way to use that community website to push some feedback to say, look, I, I'm looking for this information and I can't find it. <clears throat> and that will give me, specifically for SharePoint Online, the action to adjust that service description, which we'll maintain and update as needed. Um, so now a little bit more specific to SharePoint Online. We have a new SharePoint Online Developer Resource Center. So this is where you could come and discover what, what can you do from a developer's perspective in SharePoint Online. Um, no longer is it a black box, a little bit like it was in BPOS, um, but now we have a lot of functionality to build custom solutions, to do a lot of what Asif is actually an expert in around uh, custom branding and theming, um, but the support of workflows, the support of Silverlight components, uh, and generically just, you know, how do you extend and enhance your environment for SharePoint. So we've got a new resource center. There's a lot here. Uh, I'm just going to scroll down here and point out a few things. Uh, this is where you could come and learn about the general overview of what's possible. Um, we have a new uh, a developer guide as well that's specific to the Office 365 version of SharePoint Online. And we certainly have a developer's training kit, which our developer and partner evangelist team has put out. Um, it's really good, really solid, and it's also a good place to start, um, whether you're just learning about the cloud or even just learning about SharePoint development. Um, so that's my pitch on the developer side of things, especially if you are a developer in the audience and you just want to know, what can I do in the SharePoint Online cloud? Um, this, is where, this is where we want you to go to start to consume and answer those questions. And then for everybody with a different hat that's more on the IT Pro side of things, whether you're IT Pro Lite or IT Pro already, this is just, again, an understanding of what is SharePoint Online. And we start with uh, uh, it from a planning perspective. You know, how do you think about and, and are you thinking about a move from on-premises to the cloud, whether that's all or some workloads? Um, are you just looking to see what types of controls and actions uh, an IT pro or, or somebody who has admin uh, assigned to them in the cloud? Uh, this obviously gives you the window of SharePoint Online. There's also a parent planning area for all of Office 365, and that's really where I'm going to start next, and we'll jump out of you know, what is maybe a little bit of a marketing pitch in the absence of slides to get across some information and just start demoing. Um, but I always like to pause during transitions and as he, uh, I know, is looking yep. and if you have any questions around what we're talking about or covering or any gen general questions, we'll, we'll try to take them during and if it makes more sense, we'll certainly take Q&A at the end. But again, I encourage you, if you have questions, please do submit them and Asif will be monitoring that and, and we'll, uh, he'll, he'll jump in and uh, ask them, but I certainly want to take a pause, Essie, if there's anything mm -hmm. that you wanted to see or know or um, anything that you see coming in uh, before I move into showing a little bit. Sure. Uh, this is all really good information, Mark, and I'm no, I know you're going to get into the demonstration piece of it as well. So before that, there's a couple of things that people have put up there which are pretty valid questions, and I'm going to put, put it out to you. One is, you know what, what if there's only two people, let's say, in a company? Does that qualify for going into Office 365? Absolutely. So uh, one of the first things that I'll show is our small business offering. Uh, and we call that Office 365 for professionals and small businesses. And it's just a single SKU, which means it's just one plan uh, that fits customers that are uh, one person up to 50. Uh, and it's a lesser cost than our enterprise SKUs. And it offers all the services. So you get SharePoint Online, Exchange Online, Link Online, uh, and certainly the Office web apps. Uh, and certainly there's a variance in, in what capabilities and features are available in that plan. And those are pretty well called out on the site. And you'll see when I start to demo a few things, you'll get an idea of at least what it is um, from an admin perspective and also a, an end user perspective. But absolutely, we, we see a lot of, of uh, adoption already and certainly feedback we got in the beta that uh, either the small business offering um, that, that, that SKU is appropriate for one person, four people, five people. Uh, depending on their needs and their capabilities that they're, that they're looking for. 
Um, some people it's just a replacement of, of email and a place to store documents. Others it's a place to you know, run and manage their business from a project perspective, tasks, and, and even in a small business to be able to have lightweight workflows. You know, they're just managing, you know, making sure that the projects stay on time. Um, but it's not to say that you couldn't get an enterprise queue if the feature set that you're looking for is there. Um, the, if you were to be one to five people to, to purchase the enterprise queues, it'll be a little bit more in terms of cost, but not necessarily much depending on which SKU you buy. Um, and if the feature set that you're looking for is in the enterprise queue, you can also still just be one person. Um, and in one of my beta accounts, which doesn't really prove anything, but I am just a single person in that beta account, um, there's nothing that limited me from buying it, and, and there's a lot of functionality that I get out of it for just how I personally run and manage my day-to-day. -day. I, I think the answer is yes, and I think you know, the science, there's, no, there's no limit. You can be one up to you know, many thousands of people. Another quick one that somebody's asking is uh, they already have BPOS installed, and they're wondering, so this is Greg. Greg is wondering that uh, is there any problem they're going to run into if they start a trial for uh, Office 365? while they have BPOS. And also, yeah. one of the uh, addendum to this is, can we use the existing BPOS credentials in Office 365? Yeah, it's a great question. So we had put out uh, some information during the beta to, to make sure that people didn't get into some dark corners. Um, so BPOS is our uh, uh, version before Office 365 became Office 365. And it's all the same services, and it's based on all of the 2007 product technologies. But if you're a BPOS customer today, the best pathway forward is if you want to start playing with Office 365, I would treat it as a playground because you're going to be getting it soon. Uh, everybody who's a BPOS customer will be upgraded to Office 365 automatically. Um, one of the tricky parts is if you become an Office 365 tenant in a trial account for 30 days, um, you will probably have to sign up with a different company name, only that because the BPOS system and the Office 365 system do share a parent provisioning and a billing system. Um, so they're very different systems. They're running on very different servers, but it's the same data center, and of course it's the same service that Microsoft offers. Um, one is just our, our newest, latest, greatest. So I would caution you to, uh, to if you start a trial, which I, I should say, I encourage you to start a trial, but think of it as a playground and a throwaway. Um, you will get moved from BPOS to Office 365, and the way that we have it in our contracts is you can move as soon as we're ready to move you, or you can opt out for up to a year, and that's any time we make a major upgrade to the system. Um, so that clock is started now, uh, which is basically when we hit GA, which was um, just a little less, than, a little over a week ago now. Um, so if you do start an Office 365 trial, uh, you, you won't be able to move over your credentials as is, but you certainly have the same credentials, but I would just encourage you, if you do it, sign up with a little bit of a variant of your, of your uh, company name, maybe even call it company name test, uh, and then and you can experience what Office 365, what you're going to get moved to for 30 days, uh, and then it's a matter of, of, of your move schedule based on uh, when we start upgrading or move, transitioning, uh, or if you've opted out to wait a little bit longer, then certainly that, that will affect your uh, when you when you start to get Office 365. Great. Yeah, let's just get into the uh, demonstration, I guess. Thanks, Mark. Uh, you're, you're very welcome. But, but again, uh, I, I, we do encourage questions, and, and uh, I've asked to see if there's something that, that is worth uh, interrupting, that, that he please do that. So don't hesitate to submit any questions if you've got them when, when we're starting to show some stuff. So I'm just going to minimize these so I don't accidentally go back to them. Um, but those are just the main websites. Um, but the place that I wanted to start is a little bit from the uh, IT Pro side of things. So if you sign into the service and you start a trial or you, or you go straight to buy, um, this is going to be your admin portal. And, and this is where you will first land after the 10 or 15 minutes it takes to provision your tenancy. Uh, and all I mean by tenancy is the, your, your part of Office 365 where you have your admin console, which is what you see here, and then when we start to dive into the services, those are your services, those are your uh, environments in Office 365. So because I'm signed in as an admin, I do see this admin link. If I was signed in as an end user, I'll show you what that looks like in a second, um, but you'll still see that admin link, and it's only because I have admin credentials. 
Um, but if you are the admin, this is what you would see, and this is where I go to basically start everything uh, so that I can get things set up. I can migrate in. I can adjust my mail. If I'm uh, connecting to Active Directory so that I federate all of my users and, and, and use Active Directory on-premises as my source of where tokens are delivered for people to have access and authenticate, this is where you go to do and set up all that. And I'll just give you a quick glimpse at a few things uh, and then start to move on into a little bit more uh, of uh, what the admin experience will be for a small business in that SKU, and then uh, uh, navigate through a whole bunch of stuff. So this is going to be pretty much a demo through all, throughout and uh, hopefully uh, showing some stuff that you haven't seen or at least seen it in a different way. So uh, one thing that you do right when you sign into the service is you add your users. If I'm going to set up for single sign-on, this is where you go to federate Active Directory and you synchronize. You can also just upload people directly into our directory service, which is what you see here. Um, and I've uh, uploaded, I have 25 people on this account, and I've been working with a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons, and SharePoint Online has actually really helped me uh, work on documents during the beta to work with people who are outside of my company. Um, but what you see here, obviously, we've been working with SE. Uh, we've been working with Amy, who is a fake person for demoing, but I've got a lot of people here, and this is where I would go to add a user delete a user, um, give them different credentials if I wanted to make somebody an admin, and uh, I'll show you what a little bit of that means. And so we'll see, we'll, we'll take a look at here uh, on SE and give you an idea of what plan he's on. So right now this was a beta account. It'll get upgraded soon to a GA. All the bits have been upgraded, but from this perspective, um, I just have the, the E3 plan, which effectively gets me all services plus the Office Professional Plus. So in this environment, in uh, Seat's persona in my environment, he has the full SKU. If I wanted to go in here and uh, he's already been made a global admin because he was doing some uh, testing and whatnot with SharePoint Designer, uh, working with one of our, our individuals on our end, uh, we made him a global admin. Uh, let's say that project ended and don't take any offense here. Uh, no. um, but I'm going to take away some admin roles, but I'll give it to you back so that you have it. From a demo perspective, I'm the admin for my whole tenancy, and I thank you, uh, Asif, for the great work that you've done, uh, but for now, I now want to remove admin credentials. It doesn't mean he can't come in and start, continue to use the site, but maybe he can't go into the underbelly and adjust the site or, or make some administration control changes. Um, but anyway, I've got 25 people in here. This is where I go to manage those users. Again, if I'm not federating with Active Directory, this is where I go to create security groups so that I could have any time we create a new site, a new document library, um, or start using, obviously, lots of mail and how people can see or not see different aspects of the service. Um, I could create security groups off of all of those people that I just uploaded. And this is where I'd go to create those security groups that then would feed into the different services. Uh, one question we get a lot uh, during the beta, and we're hoping to, uh, we just have some new information we've just posted about how to set up a domain for SharePoint Online, a public-facing site, which I'll, I'll demo here in a bit. But this is where you would go to add your custom domain. So instead of getting the one that you see here, which is out of the, the service, spopg.onmicrosoft.com, um, I could go in and add another domain for my email if I wanted to be at mark.com. And I own that, and I've purchased that through somebody like GoDaddy, or um, there's a number of services. If you own a domain, this is just where you go to say, yes, I own own it, and I'm going to apply it to my service. Uh, for a public-facing website, if, uh, for instance, I wanted to have uh, my last name, cashman.com, be www.cashman.com, and I've registered it, I go and add it here as a domain that I own, and then within SharePoint Online, I assign that to my um, public-facing site collection or my public-facing site, so that instead of being this HTTP colon whack whack SPOPG, SharePoint.com, which is, this is my email domain, but for my SharePoint site domain, um, I could redirect that so that it's now using that, that domain that is more of a vanity URL. Um, so this is where I go to add that. Uh, everything else is all about administering the service. So if I want to go in and, again, stepping back from SharePoint, this is where I would go to manage Exchange Online. And I'll, I'll preface this with, uh, I am not an Exchange Online administration expert. But what you're seeing here is where I go and manage people's mailboxes, the permissions that they have, um, the distribution groups that they belong to, uh, any external contacts or, or calendar sharing that we want to set up, and then certainly like the migration, the broader 
uh, story of Office 365 migration. This is where you go to start email migration. Um, this is one thing, the question that uh, Greg had asked. When you migrate from VPOS to Office 365, Microsoft handles that automatically for you if you're already a VPOS customer. But if you're not yet a VPOS or an Office 365 customer, this is where you start to migrate mail from uh, any number of systems. Um, and there's, it's a nice wizard uh, step through. Um, if we can't handle it through our, our wizard step through, we've got a number of great partners that do all forms of, ma of mail and SharePoint migration. Um, and this is where you go to, to monitor that. There's certainly lots of things that you can do here in terms of assigning different roles and, and in exchange there's different levels and administration delegation. Um, and again, this is just showing you that it's all accessible through the browser. It's, uh, as long as you have admin credentials, this is where you go to access it. And you can even see some of the things that we have coming up um, where you, if you invest in the voicemail and the unified messaging, this is where you would go to, to influence that and adjust it and control it to the way that you want the service to work for you. Same for Link Online. Uh, again, same caveat that I'm not a Link Online administration expert, but if I go inside the portal, and you'll see it's hopefully a consistent experience, that I'm staying within Office 365, the admin portal. And I'll pause here just to say that this whole admin portal, these last couple screens that we've seen, is all running out of Azure. And it's a common link that this first part when you sign into it, you would give your credentials, your Office 365 credentials, and it signs you in as you. Um, and because this is running in Azure, it's very scalable, it's very performant, uh, and any time that we make an adjustment here, it's just an automatic uh, an update, and you'll start to see some of those changes. Uh, but for the most part, this is where you go to uh, uh, control and affect your different services. And for Link, big thing for, their, for them is to be able to federate with an on-premises environment. Um, to also be able to adjust in public IM if you want to uh, uh, go beyond Link Online and include people that are from Yahoo or other services. Um, and then certainly this is where you can adjust uh, user information for how people appear when, when others are, are chatting with them or looking for them and finding them. Um, but finally, we'll get into managing SharePoint Online. Um, so I'm going to just click Manage SharePoint Online. Again, we're trying to go for that consistent look and feel in uh, SharePoint Online. I'm going to minimize this and just uh, go to where I already have this loaded, which I thought I did. There we go. So this is the SharePoint Online Administration Center. And again, whether you're just getting started or you've been going for a while, for months with SharePoint Online, this is where you go to start. This is, uh, uh, if I go into the main UI, this is where I would go to create new site collections. And what I was mentioning before, that public website, that is what is here. And if I had a vanity URL, this is where I would go to associate it after I added it to that, that uh, main admin portal uh, in Office 365. It's a matter of just associating it at this level, um, and then once it's there, this uh, generic URL, which is what we give you out of the box or out of the service, would then re resolve to the public to be your vanity URL. But this is also where you can go to adjust uh, the amount of storage that you're using for your public website or if I'm working with more internal websites, which is what all of these represent, these are all of my private or intranet oriented uh, site collections. And the one that we'll spend uh, a little bit of time on here in a second is this Fabricam portal that I've set up. Um, but like any other site collection in SharePoint Online, I can review the properties, I can create new ones, I'll show you that in a second. Um, but I can do quickly things uh, for, as from an administration perspective, is I can adjust the quota of how much storage I'm using. So you'll see here, this is how much storage I have in my pool of storage to use across site collections. Um, and let's say I, I didn't need as much that I started off with, and I want to downgrade it to 500 megabytes. And you know what? I've been getting email that tells me when it's 85% full. And maybe just from the way that I like to work, maybe I don't need to know when it's 85% full. Maybe I'm daring and risky, and I want to get an alert when it's 95% full. Again, it's for this site collection. I would get an email that says the Fabricam portal site collection is 95% full. You might want to give it a little extra storage. So when I save this pretty instantaneously, it's going to go in and it's going to adjust down from 1,000 to 500 megabytes. Um, you'll see our little spinner icon uh, that's letting us know that it's doing some work. But pretty much effectively, if I'm taking it away or giving it, it's automatically available. Uh, and it's based on the amount of, of uh, storage I have available in my whole tenancy. The other thing you can quickly adjust, um, let's say that uh, we've been using this portal and we've started to add some custom solutions. I can also go in and adjust the amount of resources that is required for this, this site collection. 
So right now I have 100 resources allocated to it. Maybe I've been monitoring the custom solutions. A lot of people like them. They start to use them. And it looks like I need more uh, resources so that, uh, that these uh, solutions are optimized and running uh, as best they can. And again, I could be warned if I'm nearing the 200 level to let me know if we're 85% full. And I'll be conservative here and leave it at 85% because I want to know if I'm nearing that limit, because I want to up it so that my end users aren't having a bad experience when they're using those certain customizations. So I'm going to click Save. And again, automatically, those server resources are allocated to that specific site collection. And I could do same actions across multiple site collections, where I could multiple select and then do a significant change. Uh, th this may be a common change. Uh, the next thing that I would do here, and I'm going to, I'm going to take, I've, given, I've taken away some some uh, uh, capabilities from Asif, and <clears throat> because I feel bad, I'm going to give him access uh, to another one of these site collections. So let's say he's starting to work with the DPE team, and I want to make Asif an owner. So I'm in here as the SharePoint Online administration owner. It's the biggest hat that we have for SharePoint Online administration. What I want to do here is now delegate <clears throat> so that Asif has um, site collection ownership or site collection administration ownership. So I've added him here as a site collection administrator for this site collection. I'm going to click OK. And now maybe I'd send an email to SC saying you're now an owner. Go for it. Whatever you need to do on that site collection, it's all yours. What we're looking at here again is the, the parent level to all site collections where you do your tenant administration. Um, so very quickly, a few other things that you can do here. Uh, that is another way of influencing how SharePoint Online works for you is this is where you go and you can manage people uh, and manage their user profiles. A lot of this information would have come in from Office 365, but uh, just to show you a little bit, I'm going to find SE and see what he looks like on my side of things. Um, and that's not going to resolve. We'll try me just so we can at least show the user pane. So I'm going to go in and just edit my own profile, but I could do this on behalf of everybody else. So in this tenancy in SharePoint Online, here's my first name, last name. If I wanted to put in my title, um, I could. I'm a senior product manager in real life in this demo environment. I'm a senior marketing associate. Karen Berg is my manager. These start to influence the way that SharePoint Online works so that if I wanted to go into an organizational view of my my site, you would see that Karen Berg is my manager. And that's because I, I called that out here. Uh, or you could do it uh, programmatically and make sure that the hierarchy that you have in Active Directory is reflected in SharePoint Online so people can find other people much quickly, much more quickly. Some of this is accessible to the end user. Some of it is accessible only to the admin. Uh, and if you know anything about Active Directory or just directory uh, administration, this is where you would go to add all that information or make sure that it's correct. Or on behalf of somebody else, this is where you go to adjust it. Um, the other thing you can do here in the user profiles is, is manage and uh, work with my sites. So there are some things that are grayed out because Microsoft manages some of these things at a parent level. But if you want to go in here and if, if somebody leaves the company, you can go in and do things like set a secondary my site owner, which means uh, somebody's leaving the company. Uh, we want to take over that my site temporarily, uh, grab any information that was uh, in there that we want to retain before that my site goes away. Um, and again, I'm just going to add myself as the secondary. I'm going to do a global address lookup and hit OK. And now if anybody is leaving the company or needing to go to that my site, I have now the permissions to go there. And then finally, the term store. Um, I'll be real brief here, but if you know anything around enterprise content management or term sets or taxonomy, this is where you go to uh, add your, your unique term sets. And the one that we have in here is just for demo purposes. But you'll get a sense of the hierarchy and how we put in at a parent level ways of describing content so that you can then consume this list, this taxonomy, from a site collection level that, that in the hierarchy of SharePoint Online is below this tenant level. So hopefully that's a quick overview from an administration perspective of really our enterprise SKU. And I'm going to switch over to Firefox here and show you what that looks like for a small business uh, in, in what they have. Hey, Mark. So, yeah, you bet. Sorry. Uh, something that I think correlates to what you're talking about right now, I want to go ahead and ask that. So yeah. uh, a couple of people asked this 
almost the exact same question saying that, you know what, what if we have the P1 license, for example, and we want to go to enterprise? What is the migration strategy for that? Is it possible, first of all? So right now we don't have a migration path beyond a manual move. Um, we are reviewing a plan for how can we move when somebody wants to move from P1 up to one of the K or E SKUs. Um, but right now it would be a bit of a, a manual migration. Um, there are tools to help. Uh, and depending on how much customization or how much work you've done in P1 uh, might dictate you know, what that move would look like. We do have some of our, our um, Accelerate partners that are Office 365 specific, I believe, that are um, putting in practice, you know, just getting the processes right and being able to then help and offer that as a service. Uh, but right now we don't have an automatic upgrade from P1 to one of the enterprise SKUs. Uh, so it is important to understand what is in the different offerings and services um, and certainly, uh, you know, choose accordingly. Um, but it is something that we know, uh, you know, a small business may not be small forever. Uh, so, but, but for right now, it's a great question that we don't have a great answer for, but we do have a, a way to do it. It's just it would be a little less automated than, than what I hope will come into the place in the future as far as um, the planning I'm aware of. Great. Another one that's related, kind of related to that is, okay, we, we want to move our existing SharePoint environment online. I'm not sure if you already touched upon this or not, but we have a yeah. good deployment. A few people are using it. Now we want to go to Office 365. Is there a good migration strategy for that, or do we have to go to one of our partners uh, to make that happen? Uh, again, I think the, the answer depends on how much uh, content data and how much you know, use uh, there is with, of on-premises or if you're using a, a partner-hosted service and you're wanting to move to Office 365. Um, it all depends if you've got you know, light usage and only you know, a few workloads are being leveraged. Um, that might be a pretty easy migration to, to manage by yourself. Certainly, uh, the larger the migration, the larger amount of, of data, the amount of sites, customizations, obviously taking into effect also email uh, and where the users are if they're in Active Directory. Uh, it can get more complex, and not in a scary way, but just in an upgrade to any different service or different offering. Um, but we do have a lot of, of self-hosting migration paths. We do have a lot of great SharePoint uh, and Exchange and Link partner offerings that are tools that are just to help you know, do the actual migration. Uh, I would encourage anybody to go to the site uh, that I had called out that is uh, around the administration side. There is a parent level if you went to Office 365 WAC Deploy um, that gives you a lot of insight into the different things to think about to plan and assess effectively the move to the cloud. Uh, and depending on how complex that might be, um, for how much is deployed and, and the different workloads uh, that, are, that are already available on premises, um, some of it is just reviewing, can that workload move to the cloud? If it can, uh, how to plan accordingly, make sure that your site design, all the content data, metadata is intact, and also the governance, the permissions, and who has access to all the different sites um, are reflected when you move to Office 365 on day one. Um, uh, but mail, you know, is certainly something that we have. It's a little bit more automated uh, and is a really good experience. SharePoint is a good experience, but it's, it is partner-driven when it comes to if you've got a lot of content to, to plan and then migrate. Um, but we do have a lot of great documentation in, in terms of how-to. We've got a lot of great pointers to people that can offer help. Um, and the different planning guides that we've published for SharePoint Online walk you through a lot of the different aspects that you'll see that I'm showing you here. Uh, but from a planning and a, and a migration perspective, give you that insight of, of what you need to know so that you have a really good experience moving to the cloud, and then once you're in the cloud, how to optimize and move forward. So I, I feel like we've got a lot out there to offer. We know uh, that migration certainly is something that, that can be uh, very well planned for and not be a bad experience, um, but certainly uh, we want to raise awareness on what you need to know before you make a move so that you don't uh, get into any deep corners. And, and one of the big things across all the services that's really important if uh, anybody is wanting to federate with their Active Directory and our directory service in the cloud, one of the first steps is just making sure that your Active Directory instance on premises is in really good shape because that feeds everything. Not only does it describe who your users are, but it's also going to be the source of authentication so that if I were to sign into a SharePoint Online site, 
and I'm federated, my company is federated through Active Directory, the actual authentication path is going to take me all the way to the on-premises Active Directory. And if that's in good health, that end user is going to have a really good experience and actually be able to sign in with their machine credentials. So the way that I would sign into my machine would be mark at uh, microsoft.com or mcashman at microsoft.com. And those would be my credentials if I had uh, uploaded our custom domain and federated with Active Directory. I'm actually being authenticated with, with AD. Uh, so that's one big important step across all services. But we do get into the finer details of uh, service-specific act actions uh, that should be considered and, and, then, and then the how-to and what tools are available. Great. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. So what you're looking at here is, again, a portal for Office 365, but I'm now signed into my small business uh, account that I have. And so it has a similar look and feel in terms of that nice orange and white Office 365 color scheme we've gone for. Um, and I get the same types of alerts. Um, if I wanted to go and purchase now, uh, I could do that action, and you'll see it's really easy. Uh, this is something that we try to make very easy. Uh, but as an admin, if my company says, yep, we like it, let's go for it, uh, this is where you would go to then uh, to purchase. Um, this is also where I go to uh, as an end user on this home tab where I can actually go and go to my inbox. Um, so this is now Outlook web app um, that I'm going to sign into and uh, probably should sign into a different time zone. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you, I just signed up for this account on the, the general availability day. So there's probably not a lot here. I'll show you my, my other Outlook calendar. Uh, when you see it, but this from an end user perspective is maybe where I go to check my email, to write new emails, to see other people's calendar across the organization uh, in the browser. So this is the Outlook web app. Um, and I get there directly from my Office 365 portal. Uh, as, an other, as another action that I can take as an end user or as an admin, I get this link to go to my team site. And the one unique thing you'll see in the Office 365 for small business offering is this Chrome that we have, the Office 365 Chrome, around the different services. So each time I went from home to Outlook to Teamsite, these remained at the top so I can navigate through those services. It's a little bit different in the, in the enterprise SKUs uh, in that you take it to uh, some different areas. We, we try to maintain the consistency as best we can, but we also try to enhance the, the level of customization of what customers do or don't want to see when they actually get to the different sites. But what you're seeing here is a SharePoint Online for small business site. And this is very vanilla, very out of the service on day one. Uh, and I want to start here so that you see that part of it is just SharePoint. If you know SharePoint, um, this is SharePoint like any other SharePoint site. But for the small business, we've added some uh, elements that make it a little bit more accessible or, and make it a little less uh, challenging if you don't yet know what SharePoint is. Uh, but if you do, you'll be very comfortable here. If you don't, we've tried to make it really easy to learn about the different things that you can do. But what you see here is a very empty canvas. And we've got a ways to, to edit this page that you see, which might be your main team site, add new pages very quickly, and I'll show you that in a second. But also to show you some of those things that you can do from a community perspective, where you can post and make announcements and add documents. Um, and one of the very unique things that we've done is when you go to that Documents uh, tab for the first time, you'll see that we have uh, something that's not a part of SharePoint before, it's, it's unique and new to the service, <clears throat> is this way to create net new Office documents right from the browser and stay within the browser. So the expectation for some of our small business customers is that they might not have Office on their desktop. If they do, they can absolutely use it with the service in, in ways for mail and, sh and SharePoint lists, libraries, calendar information. You can go to town. Uh, but if you don't and you're using everything from Outlook in the browser, and Word and Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote in the browser, this would be to go where you can start to um, get an error so that you couldn't show this. <laughs> uh, we'll try it on one more document. But um, anyway, the intent here is that I could create net new documents right out of the browser. Uh, and I'll cheat and show you a little bit in the enterprise view uh, where that works. And, and uh, we'll move on. But this is kind of your blank canvas in SharePoint, where you would go to get started. Uh, and then the last thing I wanted to show is what a public facing website looks like on day one, and then how you go in and change it. So I haven't done anything. This is literally the template and the pages that we have staged out of the service on day one. You'll notice here, this is the name that I chose for this tenancy, uh, which again, if I wanted to apply a vanity URL, I absolutely could. 
but it's mcashman plan one ga dot sharepoint dot com if i type that in or if you type that in right now on your browsers live this is a live site that's public anonymously accessible but i have control over the content and obviously this is just the template uh, that, that i would go in and add my information and i could certainly add different pages i could change the navigation the look and feel and i'll give you a little taste of that here in a second but this is the public view uh, and again, you could type that in right now, and you would see the same thing that we're working on. And uh, I'm going to go into now this uh, out-of-the-box website tab. And you'll see those same pages that we were just looking at, home, contact us, about us. I'm going to go into the home one, and you'll see the similarity of the home page, which is here, uh, live on, on the Internet. And this is where I go to adjust that as, as a web content manager. So I'm going to go in here and, and uh, kind of work with Asif. This is Asif's home page. Um, we're going to go in and, and change the theme. So this is where I could go in and upload my own image, which I'm going to do. Um, but we also have a lot of stock photography that's available. So if you wanted to go in and adjust that, and we'll just choose a fun one, I think, uh, since Asif is a pretty fashionable guy, we're going to choose a fashion uh, uh, theme here. And... Should be landing here in a second. I think you must be talking about a different save. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Um, so I'm going to go in here. Uh, I, I just adjusted it uh, so that it would reflect that, but I want to go back to the to the fashion one. Hopefully that'll resolve here. For some reason that one's not resolving, so we'll, we'll kind of move to how about computers and electronics? That's probably a little bit up your alley, and hopefully that one will pop in. So you'll see I can also change the styles, and this is really affecting the top navigation. Um, I can also start to enter different things for the different, the different header, and I'm just going to be a little bit more boring for speed here. And uh, save this down, and you'll start to see where I'm really just making you know, uh, consistent changes. I've already uploaded uh, a tool, so I'm going to go in here and change this image to an image that I already have on my, uh, in my environment. So I'm going to insert that one, and you'll see it's very quick. I can go in and adjust the website. And uh, if anybody was brave enough or, or bold enough to go in and type that URL, I'm going to now save and close this web page. Obviously, we've made just a couple of little tweak changes. But if I go back over to now what is, again, reflecting the out-of-service initial uh, look and feel, uh, I'm going to just hit F5 here, and it should result to show the live changes that I just made. So I can very quickly, you know, easily, anybody within, let's say, an hour, an hour and a half, adjust this so that it reflects my company, all the information. I could add different maps. I could add a contact us a web part that would actually be something where somebody could submit something and it would come as an email to me. Um, there's a lot of different, uh, effectively, web parts or gadgets that we have that are a part of this tool. And I'll show them real quickly and then move on to show a little bit more on the, the more of the enterprise side of things. But if I go in here into insert, you'll see all the different gadgets that we have that are in the service available uh, to be added, where you could add maps and directions. You could add a video, something like a YouTube video. You could add that contact us web part that I showed you or that I uh, mentioned. And then there's also more gadgets that you could add to the page um, that uh, I'll just show you that quickly that contacts us and Cashman at Microsoft.com. If anybody wants to send me, sends me an email, if you did go to this, when I save this down, you'll see this form now is where somebody could fill out their name, email information, and send me a message or feedback about my, my company. So I'm going to save that and show you one more time the live page. Uh, I believe I just added that to the home page. And you'll see there's that new gadget that's now available for people to submit uh, questions or comments or whatever it is they want to tell me about my business. When they hit submit, I would get that as an email to that email that I plugged in. Um, so pretty easy, accessible, and that's the public facing website. So let's move back to uh, Internet Explorer and flip hats to look at what uh, an enterprise might do. So this is now my other account where it's my enterprise account. And I've built out here with a little help of, of uh, a designer to build out a very nice intranet portal. So this is very internal. Um, and just to show you, this is a different uh, company that I've put in as a beta account uh, and now in, in using GA uh, general availability bits so I've been upgraded to the latest greatest and I am this company spopg.sharepoint.com this one though is an intra internal uh, site uh, 
Um, so if you were to type this in right now in the broadcast, you would get prompted for credentials, uh, which you don't have, so you can't access this. But if you're in my company and you hit this portal, um, or this is the one I make and assign so that everybody, when they go to their team site from their um, or, uh, end user portal on Office 365, it would take them here. Uh, and what we've done is we've uh, mocked up a fake company called Fabricam and uh, asserted what might be an, an intranet use of SharePoint Online. Um, so this is very one-to-many. This is where we have things like this home page where we've got new information. Fabricam is a home furnishings company, so we have uh, you know, just a little JavaScript web part that we've built. But really, what this uh, web part is driven by is a list. So what I like to show is just that uh, managing this website or managing this intranet, if that was my assignment, I would go in here and I'm just adjusting a list. So if you know SharePoint, SharePoint, a lot of it is driven by lists, lists of all different kinds. And this particular list, um, you'll see here, has that headline. It has the excerpt uh, that, you, that I'll go back and reference, and it has those images. And there are four items in here um, that I have put in here. So there are four items on that featured stories zone. Um, so a real quick customization that we built. Uh, it's very addressable in SharePoint Online. Uh, it would be very little development to create or to leverage or, or to build, to however you want to customize it. But you'll see here, here is that same featured story, here is the, the headline, here is the excerpt, and here is that image. All being driven by a list, and uh, if I were to add a fifth element, it would show as a fifth item in here. If I went and deleted one, you would then only see three. <clears throat> so a real easy way to work with, with SharePoint is to, to use lists. The other thing that's being driven by lists is this spotlight image. So every time, the way we've programmed it is if I hit F5, this will just change automatically, and it's pulling from that next item in the list. So what was kind of a, a view of a kitchen table is now a living room chair. Uh, and that's just the way we programmed it. And then finally, the thing that's being driven by lists is this rolling, scrolling uh, alerts section. Uh, and you'll see it can be text, which is uh, you know, pretty straightforward. But in a list, you can also put images. And then finally, the thing that will roll up here is you can see I can also change colors. So if I wanted to call attention to some specific items, and it's all just SharePoint. This is not even coding. Uh, this is m most of everything you see here is very lightweight coding. It's just configuration or branding. Um, a very doable in SharePoint Online uh, and, and really just here as an example. Next thing I want to show you is if I go into something uh, more like a sub-intranet site that we've called the IT Web. And this is where, for this scenario here, somebody goes to submit a hardware request. So I'm going to click Submit Hardware Request as if I'm an end user. And what this is going to do is going to launch an InfoPath form. And in Office 365, we absolutely support InfoPath form services. Uh, they're available in the enterprise SKUs of, of SharePoint Online. And this one, obviously, we've mocked up so that it has the same look and feel as the parent portal site. And I'm just going to go in here and uh, say that I am both the requester. Actually, I'll make Karen Berg, since she's my, my manager. She, I'm requesting on her behalf. And I'm just going to make myself as the approver so that I can show you a few things. But I'm doing a global address lookup. Obviously, this is InfoPath. It's tied to the directory service in SharePoint Online. It automatically puts the date and that it's a new request. But down below is where you start to see the smarts that come in an InfoPath form. Um, I could easily just have this as an out-of-box form if I didn't want to customize it. This one, though, we've customized so that we are actually pulling from another back-end list that holds the information about these different hardware pieces that I can order. So if I wanted to order a new handset, it's going to automatically filter the available ones that, I have, uh, that have been approved for the company then I ha now have access to request. Um, I can navigate over, and if I want to get a new laptop, I now see that it's now going to filter by a laptop, again, being driven by a back-end list. So now I only see those three items that have been listed as a laptop. I'm going to choose this middle one, and you'll see it's going to pull from that list all that information about that laptop, the cost, the information about the different specs. But you also see within InfoPath, it's giving me a bit of a, an alert that says, hey, this goes over your buying amount. It's not that you can't buy it, but you'll need executive approval. Just know that if you want to continue. Um, for this, I just need a lighter laptop due to chiropractic measures. And uh, I'm going to hit Submit. And per this demo, where it's going to take me is now switching hats to more of an admin view. 
So it's a real input path form submitting real data to a real backend list, which is what you see here. Um, so this particular one is just gotten submitted. Uh, it takes just a couple seconds here to resolve to a, a state. I'm going to show you one uh, that is in progress that is associated to me that I haven't approved. So that you can see not only do we host input path, the service, we also host Visio services. And if you've ever used Visio, it can be used to create and, and diagram workflows. Um, but the way that it's reflected in SharePoint Online is to actually show you that running workflow. Um, you could have built this in Visio if you didn't, and you just have different steps in your workflow um, that are defined by your company. Um, you would still get a similar view, but it might not be as custom a view. Um, but certainly you would, you would see this uh, uh, very visual workflow running. And as you can see, we've just kicked it off, so we've sent an email to the requester, an email to the approver, and if I zoom in or zoom out, you can see all the different steps in this particular workflow, all the way up to it getting approved. Um, so that's kind of an administrative view. If I wanted to check on how uh, a, a particular order is going, I could go and check it at this level. From another level, we've created a dashboard that uses both the information that comes off of that info path form and the state that it's in, uh, and, and that's reflected if we have the amount of hardware requests that have been approved. That's the KPI that's being shown here, uh, and I need to go and approve some so that it, I can show that this uh, you know, is in green and I'm meeting some of my uh, SLAs that I have within my company. But also in this dashboard, what we're showing here is uh, Excel and Excel services. So this is using Excel, uh, the Excel web app, and just to show you that I can use this to actually slice and dice the information if I wanted to see what our costs were in Q1 in South America. And this will filter on. It's a live preview. It's coming from live data that I have in SharePoint Online, but viewed here in a way that's a lot more accessible or only shows me information that I'm interested in uh, from a dashboard perspective. So you can have a number of different dashboards that you build for different people, managers, executives, uh, you know, IT uh, or, or hardware approvers, as in this example. But you'll see a lot of different ways to represent information, and it's rich data. So if you've built out uh, in Excel a nice look that gives you rich, uh, viewable information, whether it's uh, graphical here uh, in color or, or just a trend line with our spark lines, it'll be reflected. Uh, or it might just be pulling a graph that exists in Excel. So this example here on the right-hand side is showing Excel services pulling this graph that's in a, a, a Excel spreadsheet in a document library. Um, and that's a really great tool for building up these types of experiences and very supported and available in SharePoint Online. Hey, Mark? Yeah. So this, by the way, this site looks beautiful. I mean, whoever did it, I think, did a great job in branding. So kudos to them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a question that comes in that, that came in that uh, I think is similar to what you're talking about here. Um, this is from uh, Sam. Uh, okay. The question here, and I'm going to expand on this question. Okay, here's a question. In Office 365, can you add third-party customizations with Nintex or K2 or other type of apps? And I guess it goes along, I'll expand on it, that it, what if you wanted to have uh, web parts that you've purchased from Bamboo or other yep. entities? Can you do any of these kind of customizations, put it into your Office 365 deployment? Yeah, that's a great question. So that site that I referenced earlier, that SharePoint Online Developer Resource Center, it's obviously for the developer, and a lot of our RISV's partners have been not just going to that site, but working off of that same information to know what the current boundaries are, but also to, to you know, we're working with them to, what, to show what our future planning is. So right now, the big, um, the easy way to the answer the question is we support the sandbox, which is a feature in SharePoint Online, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of what that looks like here. If I go into site settings, and I go into, um, at the, parent level, sorry, I need to go up a level. Uh, if I go into parent level of this site collection, and I then navigate into, I guess I could have just gone directly there, apologize for this taking a second. Uh, but if I now go into site settings, I'll go be able to get into what is called the solutions gallery. And for this particular website, um, some of these uh, custom look and feel, uh, you know, th like the featured story web part uh, required a customization. I have also a, a sandbox solution that I'll show you here in a second that we've uploaded and activated here. But these are all solutions that were built uh, in Visual Studio or that level of a developer uh, level and, and have been uploaded into the site collection as new custom code. 
Um, not all ISV solutions will fit the sandbox, and, and uh, for anybody, maybe Sam, who asked the question, or, or as you start to discover, there are really two levels of development in SharePoint Online, in SharePoint, uh, where you have farm level solutions, which would be something that we don't support in online just yet, and you have sandbox level solutions, or site collection scoped solutions. We have a number of ISVs that have been working in the beta that are coming out with different solutions. Um, one of them that I can think off the top of my head is a MySite solution where they add uh, more microblogging technology to everybody's MySite. Where they upload that is the solution gallery of the parent level MySite, which we call the MySite root site collection. And they upload their custom solution there. It's run like you see here and activated. But once activated, that particular solution runs uh, then at everybody's MySite, which I'm going to show you mine here in a second. Uh, so there are a number of customizations that have been built by third parties. We certainly encourage if businesses write and build their own web parts or uh, event receivers or different workflow activities or custom site templates and, and master pages, that they're all very doable and deployable and, and it's very much a working environment. You can take it out of the box, out of the service, or of course like this site that's a little bit more like an intranet for a, a larger customer. Um, this would be, you know, where you go to take the solutions that you've uploaded. Uh, but our developer solution in, uh, on MSDN, that resource center, articulates pretty much the nuts and bolts of what you can and can't do. Uh, and we'll be coming out here, uh, you know, when we start talking about what, uh, what new developments we're going to be making for developers uh, and how that we'll be supporting broader or larger ISV solutions in the future. But for now, our, our focus is what you can do in the sandbox, what you can do with Silverlight, and I'll sh you know, you'll see uh, some examples of people having you know, uh, maybe free or to purchase Silverlight components, uh, whether that's Bing Maps or just custom views on elements that are inside SharePoint. And we also, the other third component that you'll discover there is the use of the client object model. And all that means is when I'm in the browser, I can reach in and get information that's in the service, whether it's in a list or even from an external system. And, an example we call out is if I have data that's in SQL Azure, I can make a call to SQL Azure in a browser experience, pull in that data, use it however I want in my custom solution, and even push that into SharePoint Online list or a document library, whatever it is that data might be. So uh, there's a lot of information about what's possible. A lot of our partners are starting to publish final builds since they were just coming out of beta as well. Uh, and we also now have what is the start of the Office 365 marketplace, um, which I think you'll see good stuff there now, and that will grow tremendously in the future uh, as we get more capable of, of handling more and more uh, solutions. Mark, another one that uh, we, you and I talked about this before, and I knew it was going to come up, and it did. Ronald is asking a question that, you know what, the non-IT non -IT executives, uh, of course, need to see the comparison. They need to see some documentation of how this is better than any other comparable uh, offering out there, which he mentioned Google Apps, right? Okay. Yep. So <laughs> is there anything like that that's out there which, you know, you can show the executive, say, here's what Google Apps offers, here's what Office 365 offers, here's uh, the pros and cons, right? Yeah, yeah. So the, the best resource that we have um, is a public-facing website called whymicrosoft.com. And uh, if you go there, it's live. It's been live for a while. We have a lot of different teardowns across the different services. Uh, and my colleague, Ben Tamblin, who... Uh, you may or may not have worked with or heard, uh, have put together with the, uh, our Google team uh, a, a, a nice, honest, truthful look at what Google Sites offers and what SharePoint Online offers. And certainly, uh, you know, for that, it's, it's uh, really no comparison. They certainly have an offering there, um, but SharePoint is just so much more powerful and has so much more to offer. But it does give an honest view of, of what they have versus what, what SharePoint Online offers. Um, right now, that the one that's available is reflective of BPOS, and we're, we're soon to publish one that's reflective of Office 365. Um, that said, for SharePoint, there's also a teardown uh, to get a view of, of you know, Exchange versus Google Mail. Uh, and certainly at a broader level, there's just that look of what is the Google Apps offering, whether it's the free version for 10 people or if it's the paid version for more than that, and how that compares to Office 365 that's either targeted towards small businesses or, or, or enterprise. Um, obviously, we've got more offerings, a lot more capabilities and features, uh, and there's just different ways to, to look at what they offer versus what we offer. 
And we do that across a number of different competitors. So why Microsoft is not just about Google, but it's about IBM, it's about Oracle, it's about you know, some of our larger and in, in smaller competitors to provide that honest look. And this is you know, where uh, if something is not accurate, we, we certainly make to change it. This is not necessarily a marketing site, so there's no fluff here. It's very nuts and bolts. Um, but it is a place where we, we want to make sure that if there is some counter information, um, that we are represented as, as, as best we can uh, in comparison. And it's updated as regularly as either of us make any updates. Uh, so as their service and our service changes, um, this site obviously reflects that. So it's a great source to go and uh, do, do some reading. But uh, I would be shy to say, you know, if you haven't tried us, give us a try. It's very easy. If you have or haven't tried them, uh, certainly if you're meeting to make that com uh, you know, competitive analysis, um, one step beyond obviously reading what we've published is, is uh, trying both the systems. And I, I think there's a number of things that we uh, do that are, that are just a way better experience. You know, and instead of just talking features and functionality, which um, certainly the, the different services offer uh, at a blanket level, you know, the what you can do, uh, when it really comes to the level of what both small businesses and enterprise require, uh, our offerings are, are very well uh, positioned and, and are committed to what those different companies need, uh, especially if, if customers have been using the technology already. Uh, it's a transition to the cloud to manage and operate your business in a different way. And for those that are new to the technology, uh, it's very uh, you know, web-oriented, very functional, very accessible, uh, you know, where you can take things and have them only online, you can take them offline, you can do any number of things, uh, and, and certainly the, the deep integration that we have with Office and how to work and, and create beautiful documents and then manage them and put them out for broader consumption in a repository perspective and manage that all the way through the life cycle where you can have versioning and check in and check out. And if that's required, that's, that's absolutely something uh, that, that we do uh, you know, with our eyes closed and have been doing and is just now uh, you know, very doable in the online space. Other area where we have a really great offering specific to SharePoint is really the last thing that I wanted to show, which was my, my site. So this is a place where I go to describe myself, or again, if there's information coming from Active Directory, this is where I, I have some information that's also described for me. So I may not be able to go in and change my, uh, my location here, but I can certainly upload my mobile phone. Uh, I can also upload my home phone if I wanted to and I can go in and edit that information to better describe who I am, which also in, uh, affects how people can find me. So just as a, a little joke here, I love the movie Blade Runner, so I put myself as a subject matter expert on Blade Runner. So this could be two things. Somebody could land it here and go, oh, I have a Blade Runner question. I want to know if, uh, you know if he really was or was not a replicant, uh, and I certainly will share my opinion on that. Um, but also it adds to when somebody does a search for me, a people search, if they typed in Blade Runner, for whatever reason, inside this organization, I would have come back as a result. And it would have, would have represented me in my, my site, and then, of course, how to contact me and any other information to reflect. Um, but beyond the information is also a place where people can then discover you know, who my manager is, who my peers are. And this is all driven off of that Office 365 portal where I called out Karen as my manager. And Karen has these uh, four or five people that are direct reports. Um, Amy, our fake persona in this demo, Ben, my colleague, and of course myself. And then when you get to the level of, of uh, finding the individual, you can actually go to their my site. Um, so now here is Ben's my site, and you'll see he's expert in these different areas. He's got you know the different uh, types of access, the same as you would expect on mine. The last thing I wanted to show you is my content area of my my site. So this is where I would go, and I would upload. Uh, documents that maybe aren't yet final. I'm working with them with a, with a few individuals, and I go and upload my content and start to collaborate. I could use the Office web apps at this level, um, so I'm going to go into uh, my documents uh, and then just show you real quickly what this looks like. So in the shared documents, the default setting is I can share with anybody who's in my company. So somebody who has permissions to access this could view this. I could give them uh, editor uh, uh, capabilities if they wanted to. This is what Excel looks like in the Excel web app. Um, I could obviously open it in full Excel. I could edit in the browser, and I could start to do lots of different things. Um, just a, another quick view of what this looks like to edit using the Word web app is opening up a Word document. In the Word web app, within my SharePoint Online investment, 
um, where I go and, and some of these things where you see these placeholders for pictures and these tables and smart art and a whole bunch of things are just placeholders for things that are maintaining the fidelity of the document. So in SharePoint Online, I go in here and uh, I maybe didn't want to have this space and I want to say services uh, East Coast new launch. and save that down. And then when I go back to the document from a viewing perspective, which is the default that I've set here when I click on the link, you'll see that all that rich fidelity information that, that uh, I had built maybe in Word and uploaded into the document, you'll see I've got this rich watermark, I've got these graphs and tables and smart art that are all over the place, and uh, it is the beautiful document that I intended in my My Site, so I have control over it, I can give people permissions to go to that my site so they can work on the document. And then when I'm ready to maybe publish this to the broader intranet, I take that final version and I make it available to the broader audience. Um, also by default, I have a personal documents folder, which is just where I have documents that only I have access to. I could grant somebody permissions to this folder as well, but by default, only I have access here. So this is a really great place to go to store your personal documents that we're working on. And beyond documents, and I won't go any further because I know we're, we're just at the time, um, I could create subsites. So in my My Site, which is a site collection just for me, I could create subsites for team projects I'm working on to track and manage um, a variety of different uh, projects that I'm working on potentially with vendors and inviting them in, working with them, and then maybe deleting those sites when I'm done with them. But I am my own administrator of my My Site. So if I have a My Site, uh, I can do a lot of things here. Uh, and it's also not only a place where people come to find out about me, but it's where it's my personal environment to go and do the work that I have um, that maybe I don't need to go to my IT admin of a site collection and ask for my own site or to have a project site provision. But certainly if it's broader and it's not just something I'm maintaining, I can make that request. Uh, my IT or, or site collection administrator could create that for me and uh, we'd be off and running. So. Uh, with that, that's kind of the end of what I had hoped to get across. Hopefully that, that gives you a good window into, you know, what is Office 365. Um, obviously a little bit of depth on SharePoint Online as my focus. Um, I have time to keep going, but I do want to be respectful for everybody that's joined. Uh, for those of you that have stayed this long, I am absolutely available to answer a few questions. We will uh, ask, you know, address them and answer them offline. Uh, but Asif, I'll turn it back to you to drive on how we, we close out and just want to say thank sure. you for your time. Yeah, you know, the information, of course, everybody's seeing it, and you know it, Mark, that we could do a whole two-day class on this thing and just showing information. There's still there's more information to show, more stuff to show. So, of course, we cannot cover everything. There are a few things, though, I, I, that, are, that have been coming through the pipeline in the uh, question panel that I do want to uh, throw at you. And, uh, Mark, it's going to be up to you how many questions you want to take. Yeah. So, uh Let's see, there's, there's one about, and this I think is very important, you know, we've been hearing that the education uh, market, the education industry, well, the education institutions, I should say, uh, will yeah. get it for quote-unquote free. W what is the reality exactly? How does an education institution, a college, university, get Office 365, and, and is there any cost to it? Yeah, so just stepping back a little bit, mm -hmm. Office 365 for education, is going to be um, you know, an offering available to educational institutions and that there are certain uh, uh, SKUs that are free obviously for students and there are some that are you know, for the faculty and administration that are a little bit more on a paid structure but uh, less of a cost than Office 365. But right now we have an offering called Live at EDU which primarily is messaging or email and that's in broad use uh, across a number of organizations and the move to Office 365 will enhance that, that offering. Uh, obviously, it's going to get a name change, so it'll become Office 360, excuse me, Office 365 for Education. Um, there is a cost structure, and we've got that information, I believe, already posted. So what we talk about is the K and E SKUs for, for Office 365 that's not education. Um, in the education world, uh, they have what's called the A SKUs, and I believe there are four of them. Um, uh, and, and without maybe being a subject matter expert on them. Um, the information is available if you were just type in Office 365 for Education. Uh, it's even off of the Office 365 site. There's a lot of information already posted. <clears throat> but to be clear, that's not yet available. Um, it, it has its own timeline. 
uh, but it will be directly based off of everything I just showed you. So uh, uh, we've been talking to one uh, of the Ivy League schools and how they're going to leverage Office 365. And they're really interested in to create kind of like the intranet portal that I showed, but with the intent of having it where students, uh, teachers, and uh, the administration come to have uh, teacher sites. So this is where they would go and post their homework assignments, have homework turned in on one of their team sites, but of course they won't call it a team site, um, and where they can manage the submission and the acceptance and the grades back and everything. And they've got some really interesting plans to do that. Um, but how they leverage Office 365, from a SKU perspective, it would probably be Office 365 for education. Um, but from a reality, it's based on the same everything I just showed you. So it is Office 365, um, sold a little bit in a different way, and uh, may or may not have a, a few different education-specific templates um, that would be relevant for that market. So uh, it's very much based on the same technology, sold a little bit differently, um, and uh, not yet in market, but certainly information about what's coming uh, that's available today, the information is available today. Awesome. Yes. A lot of folks are still hanging out, still uh, four more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and ask a couple more. Uh, this is also, so I, think, so I think something that's very important, you know, uh, uh, companies have struggled in the past for, this is for a long, long time, when they're globally deployed. Uh, you have offices in China, India, somewhere in France maybe, United States, and information flows through slowly depending on where your servers are. So this is a two-part question. I'm combining two different questions together. One was asked of, of where are the data centers for Office 365? That's the first one. And second question, which is related to that as well, is that you know currently, let's say we have presence in the United States and China. This is uh, Kara asking, uh, will it benefit us to go to this offering from our on-premise right now, which is slow when people from China actually try to get access to our information? Yeah, the, the, I'll start with the first one, <clears throat> and then I think it'll feed right into the second one. So these are great questions. Um, we have, obviously, data centers around the world. Um, there's some com some countries that we would like to be in that we're not in quite yet. One of those is China. Um, but we're working hard with the government and the, some of the local agencies so that we can have a data center presence. Um, but the closest, obviously, would be in the APAC region. So in Asia Pacific, we do have a data center that would be accessible to multiple markets around that area. But in every uh, main market that we have data centers, and I'll just say the United States, for instance, um, in the United States, we always have a primary data center that you would get assigned to and a secondary data center that is for disaster recovery. And that's, that's the same globally. Um, so the instance there is you, you will be placed into a data center in your region at the time that you sign up. And you want to make sure that you're, you're in the data center that, that you would like to be, uh, that will be the closest to the majority of your users. Um, one thing that we don't allow, just to be very clear, is uh, to have a single company that's split across multiple data centers. Um, and sometimes that can be a limitation. It's certainly uh, a part to not only review and know of, but to trial and, and really discover what it is that performance and, and uh, experience is like. So to, to kind of half answer the next question, um, we have our data centers at the, at the most performant they could be, uh, both from the routers, the big IP that is in, in front of all services, uh, all the services themselves on new and very, very performant hardware. Um, we've optimized our products as best we could. The same documentation that we put out for people installing on-premises, we've certainly optimized so that our data centers are running all products and services uh, and, and monitoring and managing them. And we have lots of health uh, systems and, and identity systems uh, that are running, uh, you know, full tilt. But some of our monitoring systems are outside the data center that are monitoring what is the latency, what is the, you know, the, the known latency, and if there's variance, obviously that triggers alerts, and we're monitoring that all the time. Um, but I've often, during the beta, um, before we were in all the markets with the beta, was running out of our data center that's in the, the Midwest. And a number of times I had colleagues that were both in Asia Pacific and in EMEA, which is you know the, the United Kingdom and Germany and France and Spain, and they were leveraging my account before we could really you know give them their own. Um, so this is a while ago. This is about six or seven months ago. So a number of people were giving um, uh, you know demos and presentations, whether it was broader in, in sessions once we were uh, had disclosed publicly, or if it was private to individual customer demonstrations and presentations, um, and they were leveraging my environment and. Uh, 
aside from that it wasn't optimal, certainly once they got their own data center that was just in their backyard. But, uh, you know, for SharePoint, it's as if you're loading the web page and the experience that you expect is to hit the page and it loads. And hopefully you saw I'm navigating the demo. Um, obviously the data center still for me is in the Midwest. I am on the West Coast. Um, so there's that distance between and it's a very, very good experience. It doesn't slow me down at all. Um, whether I'm working with documents, uploading them, downloading them, um, you know, updating the list, working offline, online, uh, it's a nice experience. And I would say the same for when they were using it at a great distance in EMEA or in APAC, uh, that they had a, a good enough experience where it wasn't slowing them down doing a demo. Um, that said, uh, that we can't span a company across multiple data centers, there will need to be that test and experience. And uh, I think the caveat is a lot of these people that we're connecting to my environment we're probably in a decent, uh, you know, internet connection, um, which is to be taken into account, which is part of what we can't control, is in some of these distant uh, parts of the world where data connections aren't as good or as reliant, um, we think we have a really good experience, but we also have a little bit of a fallback where if you need to take your content offline so that you do, uh, you know, go through a little bit of that adjustment to get content the first time, but when you're working on it or you need it, you could have a localized copy if you own it and you make any changes, only the delta is going to go across the wire. So if you use SharePoint Workspace or Outlook, for example, to sync things offline, um, if you don't need to sync the delta or there are no changes, you have the most up-to-date copy. If you make a change, the only thing that's going to go across the wire, or if somebody were to make a change uh, that owns the document, you would only receive the delta. So instead of downloading the full 3 meg PowerPoint file, you might upload just a couple of K of the delta, which will be very quick. Uh, and, and certainly enhances the accessibility. Uh, so maybe a long-winded answer, but hopefully addresses at least how we're structured um, across the globe. We are worldwide. We're in 40 markets. We have 40 languages that we support uh, from a, a multilingual user interface perspective. Uh, and we think that that's a good experience and we will only get better as we open up more and more data centers uh, in, in markets that make sense or markets when they allow us to. Great. Well, thank you, Mark. This is, uh, like I said before, we can really keep going for hours right now. There's so much, and there's so many good questions that have come in that I, I really feel bad closing it, uh, the webinar right now, but we have to end sometime. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> uh, I, I know Mark has shown some really good stuff, and there are some uh, public stuff that Mark you have shown also, and I'll get these links from you later so we can, uh, when the recording of this webinar goes up on our site on SharePointVideos.com, I'll put the links to uh, all the public resources right by the video as well, so people can go ahead and check that out. That's great. Well, I, again, thanks for the time, Asif. Thank you to everybody who joined. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, I, you know, certainly through Twitter, you can go direct, at mcashman, that's M-K-A-S-H-M-A-N, or don't hesitate to start using the community. There's no obligation to go to the community site. You don't have to be a named user, but certainly if you are on a trial, you'll, you'll come in, you would leverage your new Office 365 credentials, and it's a great place to ask questions and get direct feedback from the community, or if it's something the community can't answer, we're, we are monitoring that as well, along with our partners, so that you know we have the answer. If we don't have the answer, we'll get it, and uh, we want to make that a, a lot more engaging and, and a lot more uh, you know accessible to make sure that you're not blocked in the decisions that you're making, or if you start using the technology, that you're getting the, the best that you can out of it. So. Those are great ways to get a hold of, of me or us, and collectively Microsoft, and uh, you know, and, and Asif as well. You know, who who would be expert in knowing things about SharePoint and beyond, uh, you know, from both an end user and an administration perspective. So I encourage you to use those resources to get the answers that you need, and I certainly am available to make sure that happens. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Mark, once again, and thank you everybody for joining. Uh, as I mentioned, this is a recorded webinar, as, as all of our webinars are, and it will be available for free to watch afterwards. Uh, you've signed up for the webinar, so you'll get a newsletter from me directly next week, early next week, and that's going to have the link to the recording. So thank you. Hope this time was useful to you. We'll come again once uh, we have a new topic, or if you have any top topic suggestions, send it to us as well. We do these webinars once a month. So uh, hope to see you guys next time. Take care. Have a great day.